Hello, hello, ladies and gents. Welcome back once again. Hard survive for the new order as Buryatia. For now, we're gonna restore the Russian Empire. Not really Empire, we're gonna rush restore the Soviet Union basically. Word our wholesome boy uh Seiblen. We're gonna be doing just that. Right now, it's kind of tough. We're <laughs> <laughs> the situation could be a lot better, I'll, I'll tell you that much. We're losing manpower left and right, but it's a work in progress, right? We're doing our focuses, we're, we're telling um, Genrik, I think it's like the Russian version of Hendrik, um, basically go F himself, I'm probably gonna pow him so he doesn't try and take over us again. But uh, yeah, those will be worries for uh, later. To improve our research speed, though, and uh, sure, there we go. That sounds nice, right? Justice for the bereaved, and deal with Yagoda. Good. So she train up our boys while we can. Actually, no, that's not really doable, considering we don't have any manpower. So trying to steal some resources off of anyone else is not really doable. God damn it, the ghost of Bukharin. We're still trying to dissolve the NKVD, and in uh, November it'll be done. Our war support is increasing because of it, though. So the trials of uh, Genrik Yagoda, gaze burning with vitriol Yagoda's scowled at Sablin from the dock. His pitted face twisted with contempt, undaunted, Sablin stared right back. They decided to hold the trial in the opera house so as, as many people could be packed in as possible. Brown's voice echoed in the cavernous space as he read out the list of the tyrant's crimes, though it, in all Yagoda didn't so much as flinch. Genrik uh, Yagoda, this court of soldiers and workers finds you guilty of all charges laid against you. Now that you are finally responsible, do you feel a slightest regret for the vile crimes you have committed against the Russian and her people? Brown looks down at Yagoda, trying to his best not to look too smug. Yagoda turning his head fractionally to look up at Brown when he spoke, just through his words were being dredged from the sediment and the depths of the Lake Balkal himself. Yes, I am sorry, I am very sorry that when I had the chance I did not shoot you all. Brown's smirk darkened uh, as he took his seat. Let it be known that the accused expresses no remorse, now uh, as for the matter of punishment. While the court debated, uh, Sablin stared into Yugo's eyes and tried to make sense of uh, what he saw there. In his time in Yugo's service, uh, Sablin had never met the man and had formed an image in his uh, mind of a colossal statuesque figure beyond simple humanity. It was easier to fight the entity that, uh, than the short, haggard man who sat half sunken in the dock. Why had he become so hollow with hate? What had led him to bathe his hands in so much blood? Sibylin felt a raging urge to see Yagoda extinguished so much uh, for the crimes that he had committed as for the grim visions of what he could become in, uh, if he gave into the power uh, the power's black temptation. And so, when Yagoda's sentence was announced five years on, on a prison farm, Sibylin's jaw clenched insufficient. This man was a tyrant, a murderer, a plunderer, and an enemy above all. Uh, to everything right and pure. Consumed by the sudden uh, wildness, Sablin adherence to leap forward, drag Yagoda into the mud, and give him just as he deserved. Hold on. As much as I hate it, we have to hold on. We are not... You know... We are not here to be the same thing that he was before us. We will be better. Hmm... We will definitely be better than United forever. It's gonna give us some political power. Very, oh, very welcome. We were still losing political power, even now. Even once we're minus 110 in the bank. 111 at this point. Absolutely phenomenal. Come on. The quicker we get this over with, the better. We're losing so much manpower. Holy hell, man. All right, united at last. We haven't cored everything, right? It's just occupied, occupado. There's no way for us to core it. Oh, if we had points, we'd be able to core it. The people of justice <clears throat> swallowing the bowel that rose 
to his throat, a uh, stable crunched his fists and clamped his eyes shut. Uh, lest the sight of the tyrant sent him capitulating towards uh, to enact vengeance upon him for all the innocents he had killed, teeth grinding every muscle in his body, tense as he got was led away, all that death, all that spilled blood for five years on a prison farm, so many had lost someone to Yugoda's string of terror, and this was his punishment. Breathing deeply, Sable uh, barely noticed uh, as the opera house began to empty. Finally, he raised his head and slowly opened his eyes, squinting as they adjusted to the light. For the first time, he truly saw the mural that adorned the dome. It was an image of the October Revolution, of the workers storming the Winter Palace, red flags unfurled and fluttering in the wind. Slowly, Sablin calmed himself, relaxing his shoulders. He reminded himself that this was what he was fighting for. The right for the people to make their own justice, without a tyrant to force their hand. If he had indulged his temptations to deliver the vengeance of the murdered thousands upon Yagoda, it would have been an abdication of everything he stood for. Feeling a hand on his shoulder, Sablin turned uh, his head to, sh to look into Pachura's face. She gazed down at him with an expression of infinite compassion. Valera, take heart. We fight for a brighter future, not to take vengeance for the cruelty of the past. By showing clemency, we demonstrate to the tyrant that all the people of Russia that we will be never repeat his crimes. Mercy, Valera. Mercy is a greater weapon against the enemy of all that is just. Blinking away tears, Sablin smiled as he took one last glance at the mural. The two old friends left the opera house, shivering in, uh, in the chill of the night. Alright. It's insane, actually. The dude is, like, younger than me. He's 23. I'm 24. Damn. It's insane that he has the weight of his country on his shoulder. And hopefully he'll succeed. Otto Brown shuffled through the streets of uh, the opera house, breathing before I am in the greenness before dawn. R rheumatic old knees uh, aching in the harsh Siberian cold, boots crunching morning uh, frost that uh, covered the cobbles like the pal of a soul. Brown delved uh, the pelagic depths of his memories. All these years later, his exile from Germany still lodged in his heart like a cruel dagger. The calendar had sliced years uh, from his life, and still the pain did not fade. The dim years after the f his flight from prison in 1928 had been marked by failure and pain. First by the annihilation of his communist allies in China, then by the collapse of the Soviet Union into a thousand bickering shards. And still it worsened, as he learned, from the slow tide of information that rolled over the shattered Russia, that his once lover Olga had been murdered in the Nazi death camps. Ah, oh, damn. She had burned so bright and the fascists had snuffed the flame within her like they had done with so many others. He loved her, loved her more. Loved her how she had made him feel, he could still feel the thrill when she'd helped him break out of prison, and the memories of their evenings together in Moscow kept him warm on so many cold Siberian nights. All was dust now, Lenin's dream was lay crushed, and Olga mourned, moldered in her mass grave. Braun felt diminished, withered, broken against the wheel of time, rose relentless advance. He had contemplated ending his torment more than once, then Sebel and Petrura had come to him in Irkutsk, speaking of a revolution, of making Lenin's dream life again. They were children, vainly idealistic, and yet he couldn't help but become their mentor. What else was left to him? He would happily give his life for even the slightest chance of that socialism might rise from the ashes of the phoenix. And yet, no matter what, uh, no matter how many years passed, Olga's face would be forever burned into his mind's eyes. Being as she'd been during their dash from the prison through the icy fields of distant Saxony. Man, that is so sad. Oh, I, dude, I, I've said it many times, the writing of this mod is amazing. Whoever is doing this... I don't know, man. <laughs> I, could, I could feel myself starting to tear up just by reading that. It's just so alive and so... I don't know. Sad. But hopeful at the same time. It, I don't. I don't even know how to put this into words properly. I feel like I say it every time whenever I start a, a campaign that I really click with. But it, it feels like I'm a part of it. I'm a part of these people, and I learn what motivates them, what drives them to do the things that they do. Why are they here? Why are they fighting for a hopeless cause in the end? Because it is pretty much hopeless right now. We can turn the tide, but the chances are very slim. And it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a special little thing. But I'm looking forward to uh, righting the wrongs and seeing that everything will be better. Um, let's go in here, in our hearts. 
Good. I wish I could just integrate it, it goes as well, but no. Sadly, right now it's still not possible. Hmm, we're still losing guns, probably because we have to guard the garrison. But oh well, I mean, it'll get fixed up eventually. That's for sure. Good. Shackles broken. Even more points lost, of course. Steady reforms? Yeah. Gender equality? Why would I want this? No, no, no. What we'll do for steady reform? We'll go the full Sablonite path. That is where we will pull our strength out of. The way of revolution is paved with good intentions or something like that. I don't know. I'm not an amazing writer just like the guys who made this mod. Although, I'm, I'm, I've been seeing it like for months now, but uh, the book is coming along uh, steadily. I'm very happy where it's uh, total service equality or... Yeah. Yeah, let's go in here. Of course. This is going along well. The, the book is fully finished. There's a few minor things that I want to change, but now it's um, with an editor, so like in a few months, hopefully it'll be done completely and I can actually just publish it and then uh, we'll see what's up, right? But I, I do, I am very happy with how it is. Uh, I feel like uh, you guys will probably enjoy it, but you know, that'll be worries for later. I'll, I'll announce it properly once, you know, it's gonna hit, um, hit, well, the internet basically. Anyway. All hands on deck, chin uh, resting on his hands, Seblin listened to his uh, comrades savagely debate the status of women in the revolution. Oh, no, we've already decided that. We've already decided that they will get equal rights everywhere. We're women under workforce, right? Aren't we on gender equality? Oh no, that's where we're gonna go. Right, 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 right. We still aren't there just yet. Hmm. Then we'll go in here, the revolutionary woman. It's gonna give us a lot of nice bonuses. Water built effect. Yeah, we'll, we'll just go fully down the sablinate path. The revolution waits for no one. Ah, oh, there we go. We're making, we're making our own little world. Oh, we're getting manpower back again. Good. It's gonna take a while before we actually get to put them all into into here, but oh well. Sophia with giddy emancipation but a helping of confusion hunched next to her radio, sat on her knees as she waited uh, the announcement from Comrade Sablin. Every um, slight movement met with an irritating creak from the loose busted floorboards. The statement was set uh, for about 4 p.m. and Sophia had sat uh, around with her watched watching her clock like a hawk until the very last minute. Now she listened to Sablin's work begin to take form. Good afternoon. Many of my advisors and I have realized, uh, although we strive for equality both at home and in the work phase, there is still a group among us that could not rightly be called free or equal. Today, let it be known that women of Buryatia and Russia at large will be considered equal in the eyes of their male comrades. For how can we call ourselves revolutionaries if we still leave our Russian sisters in their shackles? Uh, Sophia shot up to her feet, the floors uh, squeaking at the sudden movement, uh, as thoughts ran wild in her eye, in her mind. However, child-led excitement gave uh, way to deep worry as the new thought passed. How would they enforce it? She already knew the answer, and it would, and it sent her. They wouldn't. Pre-wars mean nothing to those that um, won't listen. Someday, she uh, muttered as she resigned herself to her fate, went to hang up her husband's clothes before he returned home. As she left, however, something caught her eyes. A hatchet. Leaning against the back door, ever since she was a little girl, she wanted to chop the firewood, but it was always her brother's job. They said it wasn't a woman's work, then it hurt her. The announcement wasn't a mandate, it was a blank check for her own personal revolution. So she decided today she would do what she wanted. Sophia hefted up the axe and went to chop wood. Dimitri could do his own laundry. Hell yeah. You go, girl. Let's see what's up. We'll make it work. One step at a time. I like that. Slow and steady wins the race, you know? A 
economic. Dude, I, I wanna do all of this. Hmm, though the revolution against the tyrant was successful, the work of the party must not yet, not be, yet be done. Although we were able to form a united front against the NKVD, now we must decide uh, what form of freedom we will bring to the people of Russia. Hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go for the humane form. The more practical form, if you will. In our home. Let's go. Ah, political power slowly trickling in. Slowly but surely. Hmm. Actually, one second. All right, continue on. We still have those decisions, but we our armies are just too bad right now to really be able to push for something. We need artillery. We need a fuckload of it. We got these troops, right? Yeah, we, we have these troops. Mm, Orcus Council, sure. It's mostly manpower that we're lacking, right? Yeah, some support stuff, but actual guns we have. Um, the lives of the workers, yes. That is what we'll be doing. Full on Sablonite. Oh, look at this music, how epic. Hmm. Actually, which one of you is gonna get that uh, magical man? I do wonder. I think it's Omelon, right? The new socialist man. The days were long on the prison farm, and life was not easy, but it was a far cry from the filth and degradation of Hugo's and KVD Gulags. The Sablonites treated him well, better than he'd expected, better than uh, he thought he deserved for the things he'd done in the service of Yugoda. In time, Roman. Kosaryov even came to enjoy it. It was hard work, but good work. Life slowed and he became aware of the passing of the seasons, the simple beauty of Siberia and the joy in raising a living thing from the seed to harvest. Twelve months after his sentence was pronounced in, in the freezing courthouse, uh, the spell was broken. He was a free man, handed a bag holding a change of clothes and given a direction for one of the central company's men's of boarding houses. He stepped out into the muddy highways with Breath uh, steaming before him. He looked left, he looked right, the sultry afternoon sun beating down on him. He began the long walk into uh, the opera house. Kosaryov uh, arrived as the sun set behind him, casting a long indigo shadow down the revolutionary city's cobbled streets. He passed a hastily painted mural of the storming of the Winter Palace. The paint was still wet. The artist had questionable skill, but even a simple man like Kosaryov could appreciate the intense emotion behind every brush stroke. The night fell as Kosaryov arrived at the little recruitment office. Opposite of the opera house, a Sablonite soldier closing up the shards glanced over his shoulders as he approached. Comrade, I want to join the revolution. Uh, and one manpower gained. Beautiful. And he's going right into the army. Look at that. A changed man. Appreciative of hard work. Striving to better their union. For everyone and not just the elite. See? Wholesome boys. Wholesome gang. I'm liking the story so far. Let's rebuild the factories. There we go. <sighs> what else do we need? Anti-tanks. Alright. I'll put them in here preemptively for when we do get enough factories, right? There we go. Oh, it'd be nice if I could uh, get enough points to actually do something. But hey, one step at a time. Are we actually still building? Yeah, we are. We're also losing military factors, apparently. Being constantly devastated. But we don't have the PP right now to really integrate everything back. We will get it in time, though. The torch of hope. All right. Good. The slow rebuilding process is almost finished. At least, you know, cleaning up the rubble. 
enough to actually be able to advance further. Whew. <laughs> Come on, comrades. Give me what I want. There we go. The will, the will, the wheel begins to turn. And now the revolution waits for no one. The final focus of this tree, at least. Oh, they're fighting each other, huh? Very interesting. The, is the Siberian Black Army actually the baddies? No, the Omsk was the evil boys, right? I don't know, actually. Libertarian? Oh, they're Libertarian Socialism. Yeah, I think Omsk was the... Yeah, he has a deep hate for uh, everything that is German. That's the one, right? There we go. Get that going as well. So, Cheetah, are you not going to go after them? No? Okay, then. That would make it a lot easier for me, I feel like. Or maybe go after Aldan. The revolution waits for no one. Sablin rose with the, uh, with the sun, eventually making his way downstairs and into the streets. Though most had gone to bed, there were still a few stragglers trying to keep last night's party going. Stopping at a water pump, Seblin washed the morning foulness out of his mouth and shuffled into the opera house, promising himself he'd never touch vodka again. The enormous theater was almost empty. Rubbing his eyes, Seblin mounted the stage to greet the central comedy. Sitting around the meeting's table, the closest comrades were sipping from the glass of vodka. Markiev waved the ball into his direction, a bit of uh, the hair of, uh, of the dog that bit you, comrade Sablin. Smiling, Sablin poured himself a splash of vodka and downed it with a single cup. <laughs> he just promised himself that he wouldn't do it. There he is. Oh, now, you're, now I'm awake. We shall have this. Uh, shall we discuss the liberation of the East? Some of the neighbors to suppress his laughter as his uh, comrades turned uh, as uh, one to glare at him uh, blearily. He knew he ought to be as hungover as them, but he was so flushed with energy after last night when uh, the results of the referendum to reclaim Siberia for the revolution had come in. Unsurprisingly, the people voted overwhelmingly in favor of liberating all the people of Russia, as they had the oppressed peasants of uh, Irkutsk. Face down on the table, uh, Petro groaned and slowly raised her head. A map of the Far East. All right, it's time for liberation. Let's go. I'm guessing we'll have to deal with... This boy first, right? I'm preparing the raid. Actually... Get in here first, right? That'll keep us good. We get some boys into the army, actually. Offensive Doctrine? Yes, he does need that, I think. He actually seemed like a perfect boy for the Grand General boys, but eh, whatever. We'll, we'll give you the Infantry Leader perk eventually. Wait, what? Oh, good. They paid it. They paid it in blood. Oh no, they just, they, they just gave it to me actually. Never mind. They didn't refuse. Alright, the Parsons in Aldan. So that is actually our first target, so. Let's paint this thing. Cheetah. We will not back down so easily. Hmm. Yeah, let's do just that. We'll wait until we get... No, we'll, we'll let it fire on its own, I think. 
That's probably for the best. Um, if it's just a cap, but the slower growth, yeah, that's what I want. Scavenge for loot. Oh. Offer our friendship. Not sure, we did fuck him up a bit at first, but hey. Whatever. Oh, and we do seem to be winning in here. So I'm very happy with that. Well, it's kind of stalemate as well. But we could use the political power, honestly. Economic reforms would be very welcome. I would love to do that. Oh, look at that. And we actually get guns as well. Yes. Only 60 days. Alright. Away home. Will we integrate them? I don't know. Hmm. We'll see, I guess, right? But we do have our work cut out for us, that's for sure. So, to get, go for new schools, let's go for research facilities this time, I think. Because you're already doing new schools, right? Yeah, and just take it from there. Good. Comrades in arms. Hmm. Does that mean that they would actually join us? Yeah. Straight up, actually. That is pretty much it. Autonomous. Ah. So I decrease coring speed. The Far Eastern War. Yeah, we do need to clean this up. That's for sure, though. Let's get in here. Homeward bound. Sablon watched as the mist uh, of his breath froze into tiny crystals of ice that fell, glimmering and silent. To the crisp packed snow, native Siberians called it the Whisper of the Stars. Shivering alongside him, despite their heavy fur coats, were the rest of the Central Committee. Uh, though it was morning, the mist rising off in the forest uh, blurred the sun, the giving the impression that they were looking at everything through the frosted window. They seemed to call us out of the mist, a legion of phantoms slogging through the snow, their tattered uniforms. To Seblin's eye, the partners of Alden seemed like tortured specters of the past. Once valiant warriors who had been denied their internal arrest and now roamed the land forever trapped in the mortal realm. They uh, stared forward, eyes uh, guttering and dim, carrying guns held together by a little more than faith, squinting in the dawn as though unaccustomed to going uh, about in the light of the day. Sablin's heart wrenched to see their horses trudge huffing through the snow, ribs poking out of their skin. In their quiet struggle, they seemed to form an image of the rider's long years of torment and deprivation. He saw the blood and sweat of the painful decades lurking behind the guttering gazes of the men and the beast. Saluting as he appeared out of the fog, uh, Guzhap Ochirov uh, rode before Sablin and dismounted. Though he was gaunt as his men, his eyes still burned with love for freedom and the revolution. Gripping his arm in greeting, uh, Sablin could tell that this man was a man who would sooner die than give up uh, the fight. After that, it was a simple matter of signing the treaty. The revolution's troops moved north into Aldan as the par partisans were finally freed from their long years of penury and anguish. As they marched into the south to return to their homes and families, Sablin saw their eyes shine lambent and the long doused light of pure simple joy. Oh hell yeah! There we go. We annexed them. Does that mean we have to? Yeah, we actually have to court it though, still. To this day. And I mean, we will. In time. Hmm. St 
still need a fuck lot of guns though that's for sure but that is pretty much all the time i have left for today i uh do hope you've enjoyed it make sure yes Oh, oh, the Civil War's popping off. But anyway, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you did. Hopefully, I'll see you next time. And uh, hopefully, you have a nice day. Bye-bye.